Beep, beep. Beep, beep, Joey. Beep, beep, Richie. I can't do the Pennywise voice. Yeah, we're just doing a random live stream because I'm bored. <laughs> Not because it's like a lack of stuff to do. I've got plenty of stuff to do. But I guess I just need some social interaction. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm sorry. Hello. That's my cat. Did you get a prank because I started talking? Hello. Now I'm being stared at by a cat. Hello. <laughs> I think I'm doing okay. Uh, Wicked Syndicate. Has Maddie or Mary encountered Casper cake before? Um, I don't think so. Not directly. <laughs> Afternoon, children. And look at that. The chat is actually showing up on the stream for a change. <laughs> oh yes, my cat wants out. One second. She's never very happy when I suddenly start talking. She's like, oh, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That was a professional when I streamed. Okay. We are drawing a magpie today. funny thing if you follow me on Twitter I tweeted the other day I had a magpie in my garden which is really rare for where I live so I thought hey the next bird I'm going to do is a magpie I've been trying to post like speed draw videos every Monday for a while but I was like oh wait it's Monday today and I don't have a video so I'm like well this is it in fact let me just double check I'm recording <laughs> the last thing we want to happen is that I'm not recording. Let's... Uh, is it recording? Hey, it is now. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't look like Magpie Pony. Well, it's it's a, it's a magpie. Not everything has to be about ponies. But I know the joke. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, we just started. We just finished the flat color on the magpie. And gave him a little bit of sheen because magpies aren't actually black and white. They do have an emerald sheen in their tail and a little bit of sapphire through their feathers. They're actually multicolored birds. They are not black and white. So we're trying to capture that kind of colour. Uh, this particular magpie is of the British variety, so there might be a magpie that's native to where you live that doesn't quite look like this, but that's because this is the British version. <laughs> Ponies for life. Uh -huh. uh, Wicked Syndicate, do you think you could beat Kick in a foot race? Uh, no, he'd probably definitely have me beat. Oh, goodness. Okay. I know this is kind of a, a random stream we're having. Whoa, hello. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just telling the people that I am streaming. Because I know you can set up Restream to do that, but last time I did that, it, every time you disconnect and reconnect, if your internet goes down or whatever, Restream will just retweet every time. So I prefer having that off. I'll just do it manually. Live streaming while I draw a magpie. Because magpie. 
<laughs> there you go. So professional. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> Let's all become magpies, then we can have the shiny stuffs. I know, right? <laughs> You'll be dur. I'll be me. I like being human. Although, there are some days where we're like, ah, screw being human, I want to be a cat. <laughs> Fun fact, the first, very, very first version of Maddie was an anthro cat. But then she, was, she over time became humanoid and then I decided, hey, let's make her a Dooney. So that's what she is. I mean, I've had Maddie around for years and years and years. So, yeah. And she has a pony version, obviously. <laughs> Let's get some music going, huh? I need some music. What you got for me, Epidemic Sound? What you got for me? Something bird-themed? Preferably? see what you've got. <sighs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry I'm yawning. <laughs> Bird. There's literally a playlist that's called Bird Songs. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm. I don't know if that's gonna work. Let me know if the music is too loud or not loud enough. <laughs> it's just for stuff in the background. Get rid of that. Come on. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Oh, that's funny. This was a song that I used in a speed draw. That's funny. Oh, the music's a bit quiet. How about I do this? If I turn it up for you guys, but I don't turn it up for me, that might be okay. Because this is as loud as I feel comfortable having it. Because otherwise I'll be shouting over it. What's my opinion on Loomis? I don't know what Loomis is. What's that when it's at home? Question for you, Maddie. What would Mary Sue say if you were better than her? Not possible. No one is better than Mary Sue because she's Mary Sue. Ah, we all have off days, Joey. And we all have on days as well. He's the guy that made fun with the- what? I have no idea what you're talking about. My Loki statue. I still have that. You want a refund on today? I don't know if I can accommodate. Okay, so I need a little bit of... More detail behind here, I think. Just, well, that's a bit too much. 
too sharp. That's better. So all we're doing is just hinting at texture behind him. Don't need it to be too heavy. Although I think I do need to have it a bit more green behind him. It just seems a bit grey, so I just want to brighten it up a bit. So I think what I'll do is do that with a fill tool transparent. Much better. Just bring that down. In fact, you know what? Let's make it a bit more. Much better. Uh, maybe not overly. That's a bit too bright. Yeah. Okay. Bring that down just a bit. Yeah, there we go. Much better. I don't know who Lemis is. I don't know what that is at all. Oh, because this was just a spontaneous thing, I don't have anybody uh, planned to join. Okay, so I need a multiply layer here for shadow. Well, that's not showing up. Why is that not showing up? Oh, that's why. Opacity's down at 40%. That's not going to do anybody any good, is it? Happy just on my own at the moment. Um, I think we need some multiply shadow even on the bird himself. Just wow, that's too hard, but yeah, that's better. Okay, and I'm just gonna like narrate what I'm doing as I'm doing it. <laughs> this isn't meant to be like an instructional video or anything. I mean, I, I'm still learning. I'm just seeing what I'm doing. Well, there's nothing wrong with tracing if you're just learning. The only, like, I made a video recently about tracing and I think it's a very taboo subject. So many artists say that tracing is bad, tracing is cheating, and I'm like, well, no, tra tracing is a vital skill that everyone needs to have because, you know, I mean, animation itself is, you know, tracing over and over and over, just changing the drawing a little bit, isn't it? Or, like, you're tracing your own line uh, sketch work to make the line work, you know? Tracing in essence is following a trail that you've already passed over or someone else has passed over like if you are tracing someone else's work the only time when that is wrong is if you're tracing someone's work and then you post it and say i did this all by myself 
and you don't credit the other artist or ask them for permission to use it. So yeah, that that's when it's bad. But there's I don't think there's anything wrong with tracing. Especially like if you're just learning. <coughs> I mean, the, the professionals trace. <laughs> it's a vital skill you need to have to save time a lot of the time, so yeah, nothing wrong with it. That's all my opinion, of course. Some people will say, yes, there is something wrong with tracing. But it's, it's all up to the artist. Every artist has a different opinion on various skills and stuff, so yeah. Uh, favorite MLP parody song? I don't have one. I don't really follow MLP music. Happy face. <laughs> Think piece, yeah. My favorite type of music. I like rock music and um, you know I wasn't into pop I used to say I hated pop music and stuff but well there is some pop music I like. I've been li listening to a lot of rock and roll recently uh, especially like um, <laughs> uh, oh gosh let, let me just double check something I mean, you wouldn't really consider Elton John rock and roll. I've always considered him more of pop, but it, he is rock and roll. I watched Rocket Man yesterday, and um, it was really good. And I'm like, I've kind of rekindled my love for Elton John music. <laughs> um, yeah, that's bizarre. I really like David Bowie, or Bowie, however you want to say it. I like Aerosmith. Uh, I like a lot of um, Viking metal as well uh, like well Sabaton aren't really viking metal but you know or pirate metal Ailstorm, um, Corp Lucani or Sabaton as I've already said um, Battle Beast um, Brothers of Metal um, oh gosh uh, Glory Hammer um, uh, Dragon Force all those kind of awesome heavy metal bands I love <laughs> but I like classical stuff too so I mean I, I like to think that I have an eclectic taste in music if I have to say what I don't like I, I don't I'm not a fan of rap or soul music um, although I loved the movie soul that was more of a jazz film to me really more than soul but yeah <laughs> Always on the lookout for more bands, uh, new bands to get into, or just old bands I've not heard before. Well, not all the time, just sometimes. to their own some people like rap music some people don't it's not for me and you know that that's fine but I'm not gonna diss someone else that if they like rap music that's great maybe they can suggest some rap artists to me that I might like because there's a lot of like um, genres that cross over because I mean I don't really like electric um, dance music either but then some people pointed me to um, 
some, you know, heavy metal bands that do a bit of electric, electronic stuff, sorry, and some of that's okay. Um, it's still not, like, stuff I would listen to consistently. I mean, I, I quite like acoustic stuff as well. If it's... <sighs> Recently I've been really into just chill out music. Really just light, light background stuff, like almost like coffee shop music. Just, just for stuff to get me in the mood to draw stuff. It just makes me space out. Sometimes if I have to really force myself to work, I'll put metal on, but <clears throat> that doesn't always <laughs> work. <laughs> I like it, but that's a bit too purple. Bring that back. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I really need to use uh, bring Mary Sue back again. It, it, she hasn't been in the videos for a long time, and she's always so much fun to write and voice, but she's very high energy and a lot of stuff that I've been through recently, I haven't quite been able to be in that mindset of high energy. There's been a lot of voiceover work I have not been able to do because I just haven't had the energy to do it. So, um, for reasons. <laughs> um, yeah. Spending most of my time focusing on getting commissions done, developing my own portfolio work, Hence why I'm drawing a lot of birds recently, because I'm like, I don't really draw an awful lot of birds. And I love birds. I adore birds. So I'm like, why don't I draw birds if I love birds so much? Why don't I draw them? <laughs> That's bizarre, huh? Are you like 8-bit and 16-bit? Um, yeah. That's... When it's done well, yeah. But some of it can be really teeth grindingly painful to listen to <laughs> um, but yeah nothing beats a good good old Disney soundtrack yeah Patrick Gardner TF2 analysis anarchy is not my project so if you want to know what's next for that, ask the people that actually make it. Like I said in the video I posted, I just voice two characters and help write scripts, that's it. I'm not heavily involved in where the project is going or anything. I can't tell you what I don't know, but I won't tell you if I did either because, again, it's not my project. It's not my place. I'm just an actor for the show. That's it. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Anywho. I'm trying to get more detail in this plant that's behind him but not too much because I want all the attention on the bird but he look kind of looks like he's looking at his chest and not the thread but I think that was just a mistake I made in the initial drawing because I did draw this without a proper reference so yeah <laughs> Well, I think, like, if you don't have the energy, you can't force it. And I think with a lot of projects you're in, like, if if you're working alongside people that know you and understand you, then they'll accommodate for you if you say, look, I'm just not able to be that level at the moment. And most people know why, most of my fans know why, 
and you know I'm still taking my time uh, hopefully I will get back to the level I was before but I won't be the same and I've accepted that there's a lot of adjustment coming when you go through what I've gone through so anyway da -da -da. let's see Oh, we're talking about energy levels. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, bring that up, I think. It's not that green, it's just... Sorry, it sounds like I'm just talking to myself. I'm looking at a photograph for reference for the background. So if you hear me mumbling, I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking out loud. This should be behind him. Yeah, okay. Now, I know I made that yellow earlier on, but I think I've made it a bit too too bright, so I'm just going to bring it down. Well, not bring it down, but like lighten it up, rather. I don't want to do it too much, though. Also, the magpie that I've got for reference, his his tail is purple, not green. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, did I screw up somehow? Surely not. I think I did. I think... Ah, oh, no. That's fine. We can... Add some purple in his tail, that's okay. I th in fact, I think I did, I just, you just can't see it. Okay, that's fine. Screwing up is fine. <laughs> I'm being very forgiving here of myself, just... Uh, oh lordy, okay. That's better, look at that, yes. Let's not have smoothing on, please. There we go. Oh, we have a Casper cake, do we? Joy of joys. <laughs> You know, co like comparing my voice to um, some other YouTubers that, you know, I follow, I'm like, my voice is so monotonal compared to them. <laughs> it tends to be a bit more singy songy when I'm, I don't know, when, when if I'm doing voiceover work for a video of mine and 
Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to make things a bit more engaging. I tend to be more singy-songy, but when I'm just talking normal, it's just it's just this. But I'm also talking, you know, a bit quieter because it's half past nine at night for me. <coughs> so, I'm a little bit tired. Where is my water? Oh, there it is. <coughs> it's right in front of my face, guys. I'm going blind. And that's not good because I'm an artist. I kind of need my eyes. Although there are some artists that create art and they can't see. So, that's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway. Sometimes the monotones are the best kind of voices. <sighs> Sometimes. <laughs> What's his name? The. Oh. Oh lordy. Um, Ben Ben Stein or Ben Stein, that's the guy's name. It's actually called the Stein phenomenon when <laughs> monotone voices. <laughs> I had no idea this was a thing. I need to look this up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being momentarily distracted from my magpie. <laughs> I had no idea. It's the Stein Stein phenomenon. That is awesome. I read some of the most boring stuff, I swear. I'm such a nerd. Okay, let's get back to the exciting stuff, shall we? And draw the magpies. <laughs> oh, I haven't watched that video yet, but I'm. If, if Hellfire is not number one, he's going to be sat down and get a good talking to. But don't tell me what's number one. Don't tell me what he's got as number one. <laughs> I knew he was working on that, so... Oh, it's non-Disney villain songs. I'm sorry, I misread. Non-Disney villain songs. Okay, non-Disney villain songs would be... If number one is uh, Big and Loud from Cats Don't Dance. That is a banger! Um, playing with the big boys now from Prince of Egypt. Um... Ooh, gosh. Non Disney villain songs. I'll have to watch the video. <laughs> Sorry, I misread what you typed. I'm an idiot. I don't think my cat's very happy. I can hear her howling. She's wanting back in. Uh, 
And this is when I say, well, you meow to get out of the room, so it's your fault, stupid. I think there's a lot of non-Disney villain songs I don't know or not remembering off hand immediately. Hmm. Well, I know what I'm going to be checking out uh, when I'm done. Whenever that's going to be. Mega Man X5. You know I've never played a Mega Man game. Like, ever. I've watched plenty of videos about Mega Man, but I've never actually played a Mega Man game. This is when I lose all of my fans. <laughs> all of my followers are like, you know how you've never played Mega Man? How dare. No longer following. No longer worthy of my patronage. Unfollow Mad Munchkin, she's never played Mega Man before. You've never played a Zelda game, Joey? Well, even I've played a Zelda game. It's fine. Never, well, no, I've played. Uh, Minish Cap, Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda 1 and 2, um, oh lordy, um, Twilight Princess, I haven't played Skyward Sword and I haven't played the most recent one. Because I don't have a Switch because I'm weird. Also, I'm not going to be, I have lots of things to save up for, so I'm not going to be spending money on games and stuff like that. I need to save my pennies. Yeah, we, we know what Zelda is. He knows what Zelda is. He's just never played it.
Yeah, Link to the Past is, is good, but um, I think my favourite is Ocarina of Time. Because it was one of the very first 3D games I played on console, so I'm like, yeah, that's that's got a special place in my heart. One of the first games I played on 3D on PC was System Shock. That game is one of my favourite things. It was like a precursor to like Dead Space and Bioshock and all that kind of stuff. That game still gives me nightmares, even though the graphics are crap compared to the, what you get now, but I'm like, and it's in all of its pixelated glory, there's just something really uncanny and creepy about it that I love. I think also because the fact that the villain in it can hack into your um, hood or HUD or however you want to say it, H-U-D, that is incredibly creepy. Like, <laughs> I know that's not exactly new, it wasn't new back then, but for me it was, I'd never encountered that before. So when she, like, when Shodan suddenly appeared on the HUD, I was like, holy crap, <laughs> that is really creepy. That's awesome, I love it. <laughs> I think I have Daggerfall, but I don't think I've played it. You don't fail as a nerd. Well, just because you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings movies. They're... They're like a rite of passage, but I wouldn't say just because you haven't seen them, that doesn't mean that you're not a nerd. It just just means that you know you are watching them for the first time and I think a lot of people would be really envious of that because they've been out so long and they're like so much a part of like the epitome of epic fantasy film and I wish I could experience that for the first time again I remember how it felt watching the Lord of the Rings movies for the first time. I was just amazed. I'm still amazed when I watch them now. They have aged really well. Blazing Dragons. I don't think I've played that. I haven't played a board game for ages either. Um, I used to play a lot of board games with my sister, but obviously I can't do that now. So yeah, I haven't really played board games since since she passed away. So I'm like, okay, hopefully I'll get back into them at some point. I'm just not quite ready yet. <laughs> See, when I did the flat colour on this bird, I did a crappy job. Look at all these gaps I've missed. Lordy lordy.
Sorry, my stylus is doing a weird and wonderful thing. You can hug Joey if you want to. Your friend. Yeah, I've made a few video blogs about it. So, yeah. Anyway, sorry I brought that up. It's kind of morbid, but yeah. Anyway, um... You're trying to make him kind of... I like to try to find a balance between realism and... really push the, you know, make it stylized but still believable. So, and that's quite a difficult thing to get right and I fail with that a lot. I mean, these legs are terrible but, I mean, the legs are way too thick for one thing and way too short. They should be a lot longer but, I mean, this is probably only the third time I've drawn a magpie in my life so I'm like, eh, it's not too bad. It's okay. I mean, magpie is my favourite bird ever. I love magpies. I just think they're really beautiful and I love how at first glance you think it's just a black and white crow but then when if you get closer to them it's like they're not black and white at all. They have such beautiful colours in them. And then when they fly it's like the under of their wings, their, the, their, their wing feathers on the inside are white so that it's like this flash of light because the white even because their belly is white as well. So I don't know, it's just really cool. <clears throat> well it's not terrible but okay it's not anatomically correct and that annoys me. Oh hello, that's not right. <laughs> there we go that's better oh much miles 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 better yes I'm happy with that save your work kids Yeah, hopefully we'll get back to face-to-face -face conventions soon. I mean, it's been great that online ones have been happening. I haven't really been attending them. I don't really like the idea of attending an online convention. I did it once and I vended at it and I was like, this is actually kind of boring. So I just miss the face-to-face -face interaction, you know? I mean, it, it, it's uh, a good substitute. It means that cons can keep going so they can still finance themselves because conventions are businesses uh, a lot of them are, are charity organizations as well so it's good they would need to you know keep going but for me i would prefer not going to the online ones because i just find it too difficult i just i can't do it i don't trust the security for one thing it's very questionable to me but you know, I know I know some work and that's fine, but for me, I just don't think it's, I don't think it works for me. <laughs> Only thing I really miss about cons is seeing my friends again. I know, right? <laughs> I miss the atmosphere. I, I miss interacting with friends, obviously. I miss doing panels. I... I really miss 
meeting fans as well because yeah oh face to fist interaction are you asking for a fist to your face charlie because i'll happily accommodate <laughs> Any more bad jokes like that, you'll get a punch in the face. <laughs> oh lordy. I'm just gonna like punch through monitor two, because <laughs> that's where you guys are. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna just like break my own monitor here. Yeah. Maybe break my own hand in the process. Oh no, I can't draw. Well, time to learn how to be ambidextrous. <laughs> Okay, now how do I shade the beak? Because I've done the beak wrong. <laughs> well, not wrong, just... Okay, yeah, he needs some texture here. That's what he needs. Actually, it needs to be a bit brighter than that. Ah, no. I'm a simple man of simple pleasures. <laughs> Let me see. He needs a bit here. He needs. Oops. Darn it. Wrong color. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> just softening up these edges just a little bit where the feathers go to white. Well, I don't want to do it too much. And when you're doing this, you're always trying to make sure that you're following the skeleton when you're adding the fur texture, or the feather texture rather. But birds do have fur as well. They're not just feathers all over, they do have fur. Some birds more than others. Uh, owls have more fur than most birds. But I like making birds look fluffy. <laughs> and this one is definitely puffing out his chest a bit. <laughs> He's very happy with himself today. He's like, I found some red thread. I'm just going to keep this and add it to my nest to impress a girl birdie. Yeah. <laughs> Just adding a little bit of implied texture to the thread. Don't want to go too overboard. There we go. Awesome. Save your work, kids. Oh, you're playing the Mega Man games consecutively? That's awesome. I just haven't had the, the time or the money to invest in games and I guess I've lost interest over time. I mean, there's I, I'm i playing a Transport Tycoon at the moment, but I've just kind of got that in, um, like, I, I'm not playing it right now, obviously, I'm live streaming, but can have it on in the background if I'm working on something else I'll just hop back to the game and add some new trains or buses or whatever and then go back to what I was working on before 
Excuse me. Save your work. Yep. Save your work. Indeedy doody. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Indeedy doody. Where'd that come from? You're not a weak man. You just know what you like. And you buy what you like. <laughs> it was seducing me with its salmon maxery. It's funny, I read that in your voice. <laughs> you have a very unique voice, Joy. I love it. So I, I know you keep hearing the Discord boops, it's my fiance. <laughs> Who I'm sure wishes he could join us, but he's having some Wi-Fi problems, so um he's just on mobile data at the moment, so <laughs> not ideal. I think most buses stop after 10 now because of human malware. Ah, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Darn. No. Let's see. Okay, I need to put more detail in the background. That's what I need. Well, not like that. <laughs> I did a dumb. I'm like, oh hey, let's just like draw straight onto the drawing in black ink because that's always a good thing to do. I know, Chris, it's a bank holiday Monday, that's why. When it's a bank holiday, they run on Sunday times.
This is why you should always check public transport. Always. Especially right now, because it's very inconsistent because of human malware. That's not the right colour shadow! Hello! That's not how shadows work, women. That's better. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a, a course, one of the art courses that I'm doing is on lighting and I haven't looked at it yet and I'm like I really need to educate myself on how lighting actually works because all I'm doing is kind of looking at photographic reference and I'm like but if I needed to look at a reference and I needed to change the lighting I wouldn't know what to do so I really need to work on that Oh, I've had buses drive right past me in spite of me being at the bus stop and waving it down, they would just drive past. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I've had that happen. I'm like, I must have my cloaking device activated. Must deactivate it. Luckily the, the bus did come back around again. But yeah, <laughs> it's never fine when a bus is like, nah, I don't like the look of you. Just You can just stand and wait for a bit longer. <laughs> and you're like, taxi, it's because I'm green, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, that is one of the best lines ever. From <laughs> it always makes me laugh, it's so bad. It shouldn't, because I know what it, it's meant to be parodying, but oh my gosh, it's just so funny. <laughs> oh, bus is not even showing up. Oh, yeah. I've had that happen. That That's not out of the ordinary for where I live. Although I haven't really used public transport a lot recently, but it's because I haven't really been able to go anywhere, so pfft. Yeah. That's much better. Look at that. Look at that. I'll just go all Adam Savage on you. Look at that. It's starting to look like a thing. That looks like a genuine thing. Two hours later, he's still working on it. <laughs> it's starting to look like a real thing. <laughs> People are like, who's Adam Savage, you weirdo? <laughs> One of my favourite people on the planet. Oh lordy, what is my music doing? No, what is that? No, ew, I don't like that. Ugh. That was gross. That's better. <sighs> well, let's just put this on. No, this is very, um, very obvious, I know, stock music. Let's, let's find something a bit more <sighs> uh, peaceful, shall we? Yes. This is when I put something on that's terrible. Well, this just played not long ago. Okay, let's find something similar. That's exactly the same song. <laughs> okay, whatever. This is what you get when you're using a license tree. Oh, that's not even instrumental. Hello. Instrumental version. That's not what's playing. <laughs> Some people don't know what instrumental means. <laughs> Good lord. All right. Shall we get back to it? 
<laughs> Help. <laughs> oh, God. oh, lordy. Oh, I have to tell people, more people, that I'm streaming. I'm a professional. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing. Okay. Streaming. Hey, hopefully that link actually works. <laughs> Oops. Almost went Mary on. No. <laughs> you would know if I went Mary on, yes. <laughs> That's not what she sounds like. <laughs> Hey, has anyone of you guys here watched um, Mitchells vs. the Machines yet? If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's awesome. Probably one of the best looking animated films that have come out in a long time. It's really good. And it's really funny too. <laughs> Professional, yes. <laughs> Um, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but there's a bit that involves a massage chair that just had me crying. It was so funny. Because <laughs> I was like, yes, that is exactly how I would behave. <laughs> if technology went rogue and I was like s sitting in a massage chair and then... <laughs> And then it's like they're all going rogue and someone's trying to drag you out of the massage chair and you're just like, no, leave me. Leave me here. I like it here. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Those of you that have seen the movie will know what I'm talking about, but oh, I don't want to spoil it for people because it's just so, so funny. <laughs> I'm like, this movie gets me. Oh my god. <laughs> I've watched it like four times and it was only on Netflix like yesterday or something. Maybe Friday maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I've watched it way more times than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> Let's not spoil the film, please, Minor. Some people haven't seen it yet. So I, my Discord is distracting me. I got a ping. <laughs> it's a, an everyone ping. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> one of the good things, uh, the ping was about an online convention. Uh, one of the guests that are having. One thing that is good about online conventions is that they're able to have... Um, any guest they want essentially because they don't have to uh, pay as much for them because it's like they don't have to pay for travel as much or at all actually duh at all because <laughs> they're not traveling haha <laughs> because it's online um hi delete that please thank you <clears throat> um but 
time zones won't really matter as much either. I mean, they still matter, but it'll be easier. I'm just bringing the background down a bit. It's a bit too bright. Just a little bit. Oh no, I left it to pen. No, darn. No, I like that brightness over there. I like that. I'll bring it down here. Low opacity brushes, I know. I'm like, can you not make it so that... I, I know I could just do it on a layer, I know that, but I'm like, eh, do it this way. Okay, so now I need to really brighten up the bird's head a bit. Uh, this time I'm going to make a layer and do it that way because then I'm not worried about the opacity as much when I lift the pen. Well, I've spoken about pop culture reference humour in videos before. I think pop culture reference humour is fine. I don't mind it, but it's when a film relies on it for its only source of humour, which is the problem. Um, ooh, you know, just making a reference for the sake of making a reference. But um, if I use um, the Mitchell versus the Machine, for instance, that could have easily gone for pop culture reference humour constantly, but it, it didn't. It was more like you knew what it was referencing, but it wasn't in your face about it. And I like that because it meant that it's, although the film is probably not going to age well because it is about like the um, uh, Z generation. So there's a lot of stuff that probably won't age well, but that's a thing that dates the film a film the most is constant reference humor. I think the biggest culprit of that would be Shrek Two, <laughs> or at least the intro. There was just constant. Every single scene was a film reference, and it was mostly films that were out that same year, and they would only be funny if you saw them at that time. You know, if you'd seen the film, or you know, like they had a Lord of the Rings thing, and you know, a whole bunch of other films that were very current at the time. But if you've got a reference to a film that's a classic that's been out for years, like say, you, I'm bringing up Mitchell's again. Mitchell's versus The Machine, if you look at Katie's socks, it's the carpet from The Shining. And I'm like, I love reference humour like that, which is so subtle. You have to really see it and then it just makes the film so much 100 times better. You know, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> I'm weird. Why am I drawing a magpie? Because magpies are awesome, that's why. They're my favourite bird. Well, they would be if I was in the right layer mode. <laughs> I'm still not in the right layer mode. What the heck? Why aren't you doing the thing? I'm not happy. Why aren't you doing the thing? Ah, oh, there we go. You were doing the thing, I just couldn't see that you were doing the thing.
I'm gonna put an outer glow on this thing because it I just feel it needs it. <laughs> It does the thing, you know, the thing that it does when it has to do the thing. Yeah, it's Star Wars Day tomorrow, I know. That day, May the 4th, is uh, special to me for another reason, which I won't go into, so yeah. But I hope everyone enjoys the day, wh whatever you're going to do for it. I'm kind of going all over the place with this picture because the reference I'm using is very... Ah, no, that's not, that's not what I wanted. What the heck? Stylus, hi. You're doing a weird thing and I don't like it. That's better. No, it's not. Nope. Ah, I don't know. There's something wrong with my stylus. Uh, come on. Is it hard to transition from using physical materials over to a drawing tablet with no screen? Well, my drawing tablet has a screen, but I have used tablets that you draw on and then it shows on the monitor what you're doing. Um, I have a, a Wacom Interest Pro as well um, that I use when I'm traveling, um, but uh, it's oh, I really want to switch to just using a like an iPad or something instead, just because then I'm not traveling with a heavy laptop all the time. But anyway, whenever I get to travel again. <laughs> um, but the transition, um, I would say it's, it, there's a lot of factors to consider in there because it's like, you're not just transitioning materials to not using materials, you're changing muscle memory as well. And I think that's, one of the hardest things that people need to get over because you know if you're using a drawing tablet where you're not drawing directly onto a screen it can be quite disorienting if you're not looking at what your hand is doing you're looking at what's appearing on the screen as you draw so that can be quite um disorienting or disorientating <clears throat> or i think I think it shouldn't really be a transition between 
using physical materials to a drawing tablet because I think an artist should, you know, embrace using both. And that is something that I still struggle with because I love m making digital stuff, but my background is in contemporary fine art, so I just haven't had the space to make traditional stuff. Um, well, one of the things about digital is it cuts out all the mess, for one thing and it's more cost effective in the long run. Okay, yes, a computer and your drawing tablet, etc., and all the equipment you need for that is very expensive, but show it, so is uh, traditional materials, because just like a paintbrush, a computer is just another tool. It, the traditional media or digital media, you know, one's not better than the other. It's just digital does it faster, for one thing, and cuts out the mess but um, it's it's more cost effective as I've already said but I don't consider digital better in any way I just think that it's <coughs> um, I'm trying to phrase this right um, there's a lot of um, a lot of people say that oh you can just erase stuff so easily with digital and I'm like yes that's very true you can but you can erase stuff with traditional as well if you know how so I don't really see why like the existence of control Z is such a problem to some people I don't get that um, <laughs> I'm like you can undo stuff from traditional as well it just takes longer <laughs> anyway What's the wildest thing you've done in your artist's life? Wildest? When I was doing my final year in college, I decided to build a giant spider made from a bed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just made a giant spider out of furniture. It was great. <laughs> I specialize in like assemblage art on my final year because I was really like hardcore into surrealism and stuff so or daisism and yeah I was like hey I want to build a spider <laughs> yeah that was fun <laughs> I'm talking like it was it could fill a room it was that big so <laughs> it was like the size of a car it was great <laughs> and now it's in bits now it's it's no it's actually I called it spidrobe because it it also had a wardrobe on its back as well. So like picture the, the bed frame was like the main um, thing that held the spider up. And then the abdomen was the wardrobe. Now the abdomen, when I say that in reference to a spider, the abdomen is the big part at the back of the body. That's the abdomen. That's where all of its vital organs are. <laughs> so that's what I made the wardrobe and then it's the legs were made out of just like long planks of wood and then I just hung stuff on the legs as they stretched out and the wardrobe was full of stuff as well so it was like all of the stuff in the wardrobe was spilling out and it had like wool for webbing and stuff it was crazy it was like a giant installation kind of thing and it was a nightmare to set up <laughs> yeah You do crazy things at art school. <laughs> now that's all over, well over ten years ago. <laughs> Good lord. I don't think I'd ever do something like that again. <laughs> There's just some things that you only do in art school. Oh, um, Michael, I'm talking about, um, someone asked me what the most wildest thing I've ever done as an artist, and I told them what I did for my final year in art school, um, building a giant spider made of furniture. <laughs> well, he had, like, uh, his face was made up of the end of, uh, uh, a floor brush. <laughs> 
and its eyes were light bulbs. And <laughs> well, I should say her. <laughs> her eyes were light bulbs. Because obviously in spiders, the female is the bigger of the species, so it made sense for it to be female. <clears throat> yeah. I love animals. I should really draw animals more. Yeah, but it was based on the... I based it on the pink toad spider and a little bit on a goliath spider as well. Anyway, I'll stop talking about spiders because some people are probably arachnophobic. But this spider was not scary. It it was imposing, but it, it, she wasn't scary. She was actually quite... Um, well, not pretty, but it's like looking at it, you would think, oh, it's just a pile of junk. But then slowly your brain realises, oh, wait, that looks like legs. That looks like a... Oh, it's a spider. So... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some people got really freaked out when they realised what it was. <laughs> It was awesome though. I had fun. Anyway, I'm supposed to be drawing a magpie, not talking about spiders. I want to add some spider web to this picture now. <laughs> uh, maybe I should. Just a little bit here and there. Let's not do that with the spacing at 100%. There we go. Save your work, kids! What, the spider? Yeah, she was called Spidrobe. Spidrobe needs to return. Mm, no. <laughs> She's in pieces now, so... Um, and I would not be able to build her again. Although I still have the wardrobe. <laughs> it's in my garage. Or garage. Do you know, it took me an entire year to build that thing, so yeah, no.
I'm sorry, I got momentarily distracted by a thing. All right, let's get back to this. Mr. Magpie. Sir. I hope you have a good day, sir. Oh. Ow. <laughs> Damn you all to heck. Uh, a theme song for Spydrobe. What have I unleashed on everyone? Now that everyone knows about Spydrobe, they're like, Hey, you should draw that. That'll be awesome. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep, I won't sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the only one. <laughs> sleep has been rather elusive. So yeah, I had a magpie in my garden, which is very rare. Well, it wasn't actually in the garden. It was like on the trees behind my garden. So I'm like, it was very rare for a magpie to be this far north. So I'm like, ooh, what are you doing here? I was like, we have a magpie. <laughs> Hey, I was asked what the most wild thing was that I did as an artist and that's what came up, so Spydrobe is now a thing that people know. I'm surprised it's taken me this long to talk about it. <laughs> I'm gonna make his pupil a bit bigger, it just seems to be a bit too small. Yeah, much better. Yeah, I love birds of all kinds. We have a lot of pigeons here too, but I'm guessing you're talking like city pigeons. They're gross. We have like wood pigeons and dove pigeons. We have a family of them. They're so dumb though. They fly into windows and all sorts. They're really thick as mints, but they're really big. So when they fly into the windows, it, it's it like it's like something from a Looney Tunes Warner Brothers cartoon. They leave like a, a pigeon shaped mark on the window. It's quite funny. <laughs> and for the record, all birds, their most most of them, the their bones are hollow. So if they do fly into something. They're usually okay. They they can they'll be in shock for a little bit, but after a while they'll they'll be okay. But yeah, <laughs> not always. But yeah, we had a wren, which is one of the smallest birds in the UK, fly into a window, and I thought it was dead, because it it just went bang, and I thought it was like a bullet or something, but it was just sitting on. Uh, the step of my French window thing. <laughs> I was like, oh no, is, is it okay? And this was in the middle of winter. So I'm like, ah, no, I was really hoping that like a seagull or another kind of big bird didn't swoop down and get it for food or whatever, because birds do eat other birds. So I'm like, no, no, please don't do that. <laughs> Luckily, no one got the wren, but yeah, <laughs> it flew away eventually.
Peter Griffin? I used to really like Family Guy. It's I don't like Seth MacFarlane, but I like Family Guy when it first started. Thought it was really funny. Like there's some episodes I can watch now and they would still make me laugh, but the newer stuff, I'm like, no, this is terrible. It's like, yes, let's make this show just Seth MacFarlane's mouthpiece. Like, yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> uh yeah. Which is fine. It's his show. But I'm like, come on, man. Anyway. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna let my cat back in. She's scratching at my door. One second. Shouting at me, what? Is it food time? I think it is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you probably hear her shouting for a bit. <laughs> now, move so I don't roll the chair over your tail, thank you. <laughs> well past its prime, yeah, I would agree. I actually made my way through all, every single episode that's on Disney Plus of Family Guy. I don't think they're all up, but yeah, most of them are. Okay, so he's looking a bit too blue, so I'm just going to bring that down a little. I'm going to make uh, yet another layer. We are now on layer 70, people. <laughs> oh, what? I know you're hungry, but you'll get food later. It's not food time quite yet. You've got 20 minutes to wait. For those that have pets, you know, they get into a routine and they know when it's time for food. <laughs> And now I'm being stared at by a hungry cat. <laughs> Oops, that's a bit too, too heavy. Oh, I know. Chirp, chirp, chirp. I'm just going to bring this in some of the light speckles here. I need to... Just bring that in a bit more here.
Thank you, April. Live in, li live, live in good, I, uh, live in good or live in good, I don't know. <laughs> that's my dyslexia going, hey, that's not a word. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll just call you April. Thank you for dropping by, April. Thanks for the support. My cat settled down on top of my couch now. She's, um, yeah, but she'll suddenly move when I do. She'll be like, food? Food time? Food? Yay, food. So I'll feed her before I, I go to bed, so. Yeah. Just so she's not shouting at me during the night. Hey, human, foo feed me. Foo feed what? What the heck was that? English! Where did you go? <laughs> I thought we were friends, English. <laughs> Don't leave me. <laughs> he still looks like he's looking at that plant that's behind him instead of the thread. Uh, I don't know. I maybe need to kind of just blur out the background more but the problem I've got is that I think I might just have to blend everything together okay so I'm gonna group the layers then duplicate that group and then ooh, then merge it okay that's made everything really bright I like it um, okay Oh, I see why. Okay, okay, right. I see. I must have had one of the background layers, like, the transparency must have been up higher than it should have been. Or lower, rather, than it should have been. That's fine. We can live with that. I never put anything on the background layer if I can help it. I don't need you. There we go. <clears throat> it does look nice. I'm going to add it in like it was deliberate the whole time. Okay, so now I'm going to just move this. Oops, no, no, I didn't mean to do that. Move you to the top, then you can merge down. Now we can blur the background. Hooray! Is it even doing it? I can't even tell. I think I'll just use a smudge tool because I can't really tell if it's doing it or not. I know I could have just like, hey, why don't you just like select everything but the bird and then blur it? I'm like, yeah, let's do that actually. <laughs> Say a thing I'm not going to do and then decide, yeah, actually I'm going to do it. Because I'm a hypocritical bitch. <laughs> yes, I just swore. Oh no. You're going to hell. No. <laughs> Alright, there we go. No, that's... No, you did it wrong. Stupid. There we go. Alright. Oh, well, thanks for dropping by, Michael. Take care of yourself, dude.
Somebody said a bad word. I did. It's like, oh my gosh. Oh well. <laughs> the Scots women said a bad word. The horror. I know. I don't usually swear, but pfft, it felt right at the time. <laughs> I think it's also because I've been watching way too much Hell of a Boss recently. Like the recent episode, I've been re-watching it a lot. <laughs> Purely because I have a thing for southern accents. Oh gee, I wonder where that came from. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that it's blurred out, but I think I've blurred it too much. Uh, okay, yeah. Could I draw a jackdaw? Sure. Not today, but at one point, yeah. I mean, a magpie is a type of crow, so a jackdaw is very similar. So yeah, sure, eventually. Yeah, that is never going to happen again in a live stream. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh my lordy! <laughs> Gareth Alfred, I got such a fright. Thank you for your donation. 99, 99 pence. Thank you. Oh my lord. I had that sound set a bit too high. I need to adjust that. <laughs> Thanks for scaring me half to death with your donation. <laughs> Who's my favourite hell of a boss character? Moxie. He's such a nerd. <laughs> I love how he's a gun nerd. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and a history nerd too. So like, oh, even better. <laughs> I recognised Stryker's voice immediately. I was like, oh, I want to watch Walking Dead now. <laughs> Death Note is one of my favourite animes. It's, it, honest to God, it is one of my favourite animes. I love it. Well, you're more than welcome to donate in any currency you choose because it's a super chat donation. So it goes through PayPal. So... Um, you're no pressure, of course, but you know you can do. Um, most of my donations for YouTube go straight to Marie Curie, which is a charity that helps people um, during their last days of terminal terminal illness. So um, it's very dear to my heart for reasons. So um, if you want to make a donation direct to Marie Curie, you can do that by going to the link in the description below. Or if you want to learn more about Marie Curie them themselves, you can do that. But um, some of the donations go to them. Not not all of it, but it depends on how many donations I get. So, But usually it just goes straight to them. It's, it just depends on how the, the YouTube algorithm goes when it comes to payouts at the end of the month I'm like hmm yeah that's going straight to charity <laughs> striker is voiced by um oh lordy what's his name oh Norman Reedus. Uh, 
Better known as Daryl Dixon from Walking Dead. Probably my favourite Walking Dead character. Oh, for sure, yeah. I recognised the voice right away. I was like, oh, hey, Daryl. <laughs> like, hey, I haven't heard your voice in a long time. Excuse me. You are shocked and impressed. Well, I think he does a lot of voiceover work for uh, video games and stuff. Oh, what is the name of that game where it's like you just, you've got a baby in a jar on your back. What is that game called? Oh Lord. Um, Death Stranding. I'm pretty sure that um, Norman Reedus plays the main character. Norman Reedus and his funky fetus. Dear Lord, Charlie. <laughs> Oh lord, right. Yes, Death Stranding. Thank you guys. Would you stop scaring me? <laughs> Thank you for your donation, Gareth Alfred, of £4.99. Did you know the Assassin's Creed logo is an eagle skull from the bottom? I did not know that. I have Assassin's Creed games, but I have to admit I'm not really a fan. I didn't get into them. I tried. My sister loved them, but I just, I just didn't get into them. Um, I'm talking about the, the game. I haven't seen the movie. It's a meme name for the game. I didn't know that. Okay. I don't really follow meme humor. I'm so out of touch with all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I've got no clue. <laughs> I just stick to my own thing, my own stuff. I'm boring. <laughs> I'm a really boring person. I've, I've only played one Dead Space. I don't remember if it's the first one or the second one. I really can't remember. I've, it's. I think I've got all three, but I haven't played. Is there three? Yeah, I haven't played the third one yet. Well, the bird is looking good. He's looking okay, but he could be looking a lot better. I think. Let's see. Me. <laughs> Best person ever. No. Oh, what a lovely accent. Well, thank you. I've been working on it for 34 years. <laughs>
Yeah, that's a, an old video, but yeah. <sighs> I can't believe that video is still so popular. It's still the most viewed video on my channel every week. I'm like, why? I made that video in like a day. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Bluebirds, they're real. I haven't played S Star Trek Online. I think I'm worried that if I do, I will just get addicted because I love Star Trek so darn much. But yeah, it's one of the things, self-discipline. <laughs> Oh, blue tit is my second favorite bird. They're so cute. They're, they're so small. They're so cute. Oh, it took me a while to get the beak to look right. Like, I'll show you the... Oh, wait, can I show you the preliminaries? Did I save the pre... Oh, my lord. I don't think I saved the preliminaries. Did I? Oh no. Oh, I did. Oh my lord. Okay, okay, that's good. I did. I just haven't saved them separate. That's fine. Let's get rid of this. Okay, why, why, I don't know why it's doing that. Ah, oh, okay, I did the wrong thing. <sighs> okay, uh, have I got mixed up? Oh, that's why. Aha, okay. So, if I just select group four. Oh, no. What? One second. What have I done here? Oh, I'll figure it out later when I'm not live streaming. Okay. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Okay. Oh! Oh, I am so dumb. Okay, 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 okay. I know what I've done. Alright, alright, yeah. Ah, ah! You idiot! Idiot! There we go, okay. Now they're really small, but you're not showing them all. What the heck? That's not even all of them. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to make these bigger and save them as a separate image. Okay. 
So a lot of them, the preliminaries, the beak was the hardest part to get right because some of them, they looked, they looked a bit too much like a seagull or a pigeon. But, and then some of them are really grumpy or scared or something. So I'm like, no, I want them to look... I, I always tend to draw happy. But I like drawing happy. What's wrong with happy? So... I think um, I took this drawing here, this head, and then just made him happier. And there he is. There's every single bird, they've all got different beak forms and the best way to learn how to draw a beak is to learn how to draw a bird skull because the beak is part of the skull. So if you get the anatomy of the skull down then drawing a beak will be really easy. But um, for crows, like they usually have very curved lids to their beaks but very sharp, but not to a point. It curves downwards. Um, but this one's not quite a curve. It's a bit too straight, but I'm living with it. <laughs> it should be a bit rounder, but I'm living with it for now. Mary Sue's always been part of the video. She's always here in spirit. We'll bring her back in videos eventually. <laughs> oh, what are you sh squeaking at? What? What rattled your cage? What? It's it's a clip. Look. What? Yeah, I think it's time to feed my cat. <laughs> like clockwork. You could set your watch by that cat, I swear. Okay, usually feed her at around 11, and it's 11pm now for me in Scotland, so... Oh, I know! Stop yelling at me. <laughs> the cat has me well trained. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, I need to blur this background. There's some edges that are just a bit too... Um, sharp. I'm just going to let her out. <laughs> One sec. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Let's get back to it. Whose idea was it to draw magpie? I don't know. But I'm happy because magpies are my favourite bird ever. Likes. Well, it takes a lot of practice. And there's still a lot of stuff that I've gotten wrong. Like, the, the, the legs aren't quite right. The tail's probably not long enough. It should be a bit longer, because magpies have crazy long tails.
He's still looking a bit flat. I'm not quite sure how to sort that, really. I always doubt myself because I think it, it's healthy because if if you're seeing what's wrong with your work it means that you're recognizing your mistakes so then when you go back to it later you know what to do to improve. I'm quite heavily influenced by the Disney-esque style. I would say that I'm a bit more influenced by Don Bluth than Disney but yeah there's definitely a little bit of Jeremy in there I didn't look at Jeremy at all but Jeremy's a crow but not a magpie but they're in the same avian family so yeah <laughs> I also looked at the animals of Farthing Wood. I really like how they did birds in that show. Very, very sim simplified, but so much character as well. How, how they animated the pheasants, especially. But <laughs> animals of Farthing Wood is—it's basically Game of Thrones for kids. It's it's horrendously violent and dark, but it's so good. It's so good. We would never get away with making that today. <laughs> it was probably one of my favourite shows as a kid. I still love it. Still looks like he's just staring at his own chest instead of the thread. Maybe if I just add a little bit of red here so it's guiding the eye down to the red it might help better. It would help if I actually used red. There's a lot of emojis being posted in the chat. I don't mind. Just don't... Try not to spam, but yeah. <laughs> They're very cute. I didn't know these little bird emojis existed. They're really cute. <laughs>
He's pretty close to being done. I think we need to add a bit more white highlights to his beak. So let's do that. Let's hard brush, please. Well, it would help if I actually... Yeah. <laughs> you know the thing you said you were going to do? Yeah, do that. <laughs> do it right this time. <laughs> Look at the chicken emojis, they're so cute! How did I not know these things existed? They're so adorable. I love them. That is not an invitation to spam the chat with emojis. <laughs> this is when, hey you just shot yourself in the foot now the chat's gonna be full of bird emojis. <laughs> Why do birds have nose holes? Because they need to breathe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when they have ear holes too, you just don't see them. <laughs> I mean, birds have an amazing sense of smell. Especially owls. Well, I, I did post a new video on uh, Saturday. about um, parasocial relationships. Oh, ow, jeez. Is that a peacock emoji? That's adorable. <laughs> Thank you, Rainbow Ranger. I think I've added a little bit too much red here, but just smooth it out a bit. Oh my lord! <laughs> that I need to adjust the noise. Uh, I'll do that when I'm not streaming. But thank you for the donation of five dollars, Fund One X. Hello there. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Hope you are doing well too. Thank you for joining the live stream and scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> I will fix that noise. <laughs>
worry, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's because Gareth Alfred's donation scared me too. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm very easily scared. I am a very nervous bean. So, don't worry. <laughs> Do not worry about it. <laughs> Too much blue. Get rid of that. <laughs> Don't know why you're saying that, Gareth. You did that too. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Let's see. Get a little bit of emerald sheen in there. And just Bring up the collar bit there. Because that should not be so sharp. Much better. And there's actually a little bit of purple in there. Gosh, okay. See what I mean? Magpies, they're so colourful. If you look at their colours, just incredible. This is when I go, hey, you've added too much purple now, woman. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Tell me what to do. No, any donation doesn't matter. The amount is highly appreciated. And of course, there's no pressure for anyone to donate, so I appreciate it regardless. It's just the noise that scared me, and I was just making a joke. <laughs> it's not Jeremy from The Secret of Nim, but I'm flattered that you brought him up. <laughs> but Jeremy is actually a crow. This isn't a crow, this is a magpie, but... Yeah, I am very heavily influenced by Don Bluth stuff, so it's nice that you brought Jeremy up. We actually talked about him a minute ago. Well, not a minute ago, but a while ago. <laughs> oh, there's 23 people watching. Why is there so many people watching? Go away. Surely you've got more important things to do. <laughs> a dollar to scare Maddie. Is it worth it? The oh, no. The here comes another one. I'm ready this time. I was looking at the chat this time. I saw it. So I know the noise is coming. I just don't know when. It's like a jump scare. <laughs> I know it's coming. <laughs> Come on. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Gareth Alfred, for your donation of £3.99. I love kingfish. Yes, kingfishers are awesome too. I need to draw them sometime. <laughs> oh, you love my accent? Thanks, I've been working on it for 34 years. <laughs> Sorry, I said that joke earlier too. But <laughs> yeah, it'll be quiet for you guys, but it'll be coming in loud for me because I haven't adjusted the noise. For, for me, like, all the noise that you guys are getting is at the same level, but for me it's at different levels, so, yeah. <laughs> I am entertaining and pleasant. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Stick around a bit longer. <laughs> Probably mentally scar you for life in a minute. <laughs> Give me time. I am secretly a Disney villain in disguise. <laughs> Either that or I'm one, like, one accident away from becoming a com 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 comic supervillain. There's my stutter playing up again. <laughs> They're like orange and turquoise and iridescent. Um, definitely iridescent. Most birds are iridescent, so yeah. Apart from uh, owls, obviously, but yeah. Ha ha ha. 
<laughs> so when someone donates, it sounds like a nuke from World War Two exploded. No, I'll make it sound like it's the when like the the fat boy fires the mini nukes. Oh no, here comes another one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your donation of two dollars. Um, Electronian. I can't say your name, sorry. Electron Onion. <laughs> I'm just going to call you Onion, okay? <laughs> Is it hard to design an original bird character? It's only hard to design if you, um, you know, don't you need to learn bird anatomy first because in order to create a character it needs to be believable first so learning the anatomy of how an animal is built is best if you have that as a foundation before you start making it a stylized thing in other words you need to know the rules before you can break them because obviously a real bird doesn't smile like this <laughs> so Oh, you love onions? Well, good for you. <laughs> I hate onions. Not everybody likes onions. <laughs> cake! Everybody loves cake. You know what onions and cake have in common? They both have layers. Oh no, here he comes! Donation! <laughs> I don't like onion rings either. They're gross. I don't know. Just... Ugh. Oh, hello. I did not mean to do that. Here we go. Onions, cake, and digital art. Digital art has layers too! <gasps> oh my lord. Mind blown. <laughs> How did I not make that joke? <laughs> Maddie's walking down a hallway. The donation! <laughs> Gonna make a horror movie. Gonna write a horror movie that's called The Donation. <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> Tack board effects connecting. Yes. I need more thread. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> Can I bring Mary Sue for a second? No. <laughs> I'm afraid you're stuck with me, and I know I'm rather boring in comparison to Mary, but hey. <laughs> no, people love Mary, and why not? <laughs> no, in all seriousness, it's too it's a bit too late in the day for me to do the Mary Sue voice. Because I I try to do the Mary Sue voice in a whisper and it's just not I just can't do it. It it just I have to do it loud. And frankly, I don't have the energy. <laughs> That donation didn't scare me that time because I saw it coming. Thank you for the donation of five dollars, electron onion 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 person. <laughs> Could maybe Sue tell us what she thinks of birds? She thinks they're awesome. She just whispered in my ear. She loves birds. <laughs> she thinks they're the best animal ever. <laughs> I could improve that wing for you. 
Oh, I'm still working on it, but um, give me some pointers. Let me know how I can make it better. I mean, I'm just looking at the reference I'm using and just making sure it matches that. I know I've done these. Some of these feathers aren't quite right, but yeah. More fa- <laughs> Just so you know, I'm pinching the bridge of my nose right now. <laughs> More feathers is best. Oh really? Thanks, that is so helpful. It's a bit like saying, oh, you're drawing a human. You know what would be really good? More skin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> Can you be a bit more specific? <laughs> oh, lordy. Okay. That's not, okay, that's not how feathers work, but okay. <laughs> feathers are not branches, they're bones, but okay. Not bones, but you know what I mean. No, feathers are not like leaves at all. They're nothing like leaves. <laughs> leaves have veins, feathers do not have veins. But I appreciate the help, nonetheless. Sweetheart? Alright, bye. See you later, thanks for joining. Don't call me sweetheart though. Only my fiance can do that. He's a pretty bird. Yeah, Jim Dustis, don't don't push your luck, dude. <laughs> Mary Sue, what's your favorite song? She likes all the songs. I know you're trying to get me to. All right, yeah. I don't tolerate that kind of talk. I really don't. All right. You don't talk to the Maddie like that. Okay. Um. Well, it's not a masterpiece, but I appreciate it nonetheless. But um, honestly, it, it's just practice. You just draw and draw and draw. It's okay to not be okay. That's what I will say to Joey. It's okay to not be okay. And, you know, we all have good days, we all have bad days. But 
I think the important thing is to just be genuine. If you're feeling sad, be sad. And you know you'll you'll get out of it eventually. But it's all about just riding the storm out. You know? Or Because being sad is not a bad thing. Sadness is not a bad thing. It's it's been hammered into society that being sad is a bad thing and it, it, it's really not. What's bad is being in denial. Talking from experience here. I have days when I'm not okay. We all do. Yeah, don't bottle it up either, but... Oh, ow. There's, um... I think there's just far too much pressure on everyone to just, like, force a smile all the time. And I'm like, you don't have to all the time to me like being genuine is very important so yeah I know when you're going through grief it can be like you're in a very emotionally fragile state so like it's very easy to it, like anything can open that um gate <laughs> anything doesn't matter if it's big or small anything can trigger it i know <laughs> but i think it's good just to take life with all of that it, it throws at you and know that you're strong enough to withstand the storms if you've got people there to support you. I don't usually do this in a live stream, but if you're... I know people have been making donations and stuff, and that is great. I really do appreciate it. the The YouTube algorithm, however, um, it's it takes a lot of the donations itself. So, um, the donations you're giving, the content creator gets a percentage of it. They don't get all of it. However, if you're wanting to support and make sure that a content creator gets all of the donation you can support them on Patreon instead. Um, a lot of YouTubers prefer that to donations. I'm happy either way. If people want to donate through the Super Chat, that's great. If they want to support me on Patreon, they can do that too. But obviously there's no pressure whatsoever. There, There's more perks if you donate on the Patreon. There's more, obviously there's more rewards on there. Like you can join my Discord server and you, can, you know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff on there. So there's a link to it in the description below if you want to do that. <laughs> YouTube is a poop head. Oh yeah, for sure. But it's still a service that we all use. So it's, you know, <laughs> we can complain about how bad it is, but we're still going to use it. So <laughs> it's not all bad. <laughs> What if you can only do a one-time donation? Hmm. Um, if you only want to do that, there is a direct PayPal me link. I don't think it's in the description for the live streams, but if you want the PayPal me link instead, I can post that in the chat and you can use that. Or I can PM it to you, Chris, because you're on my Discord. But once again, there is absolutely no pressure whatsoever 
for anyone to do that. <laughs> if you want the PayPal me link, let me know and I'll post it there. You play guitar. That's awesome. Good for you. I play the ukulele. I play guitar. I play piano. And uh, I used to play violin, but I gave it up. I didn't like it. <laughs> How much did you laugh while you watched the Blissey's Boop video? <laughs> um, you know, we've been working on that since, oh, I don't know, February maybe? And, well, actually, it was probably January. And, oh, Lord. One sec. <laughs> I'm like, this is supposed to be instrumental. And then someone, suddenly someone starts singing. I'm like, no. What was I saying? Oh, Lord. I've forgotten what I was talking about. Darn. Can someone remind me what I was talking about? Oh, I hate it when that happens. Oh yeah, the I play piano, yeah, and there was something else I said after that, gosh. Yeah. No, it's gone. Ah, oh, darn it. Stupid music distracted me. Never mind. Oh, I was watching, I was talking about the Blissey is Boot video. That's what it was. Um, we started working that on that in January. Then um, it was written, it was based on a Gmod video. And although I keep saying that the TF2 series is not my project, I was not involved in writing any of that script. But I was, I don't, I don't have a piano. Um, I can play one, but I don't own one. Um, Oh, it was great fun to make. It was it was awesome. And when the video premiered, we did a call together to watch it together. So there was some stuff that um, usually when a video is done, it's shown to the people that have worked on it before it's posted on YouTube. So um, we can watch it ourselves. But sometimes when you watch something with other people for a second time, you you notice things that you didn't notice the first time you watched them, so, yeah. Oh, um, Joy wrote it, okay, sorry. I wasn't sure. You did good. You're a really good writer, Joey. Your writing is awesome. And I like it. <laughs> you is good boy. <laughs> oh, is there a collab that has made you understand yourself better? That is a really good question, Chris. I've done a lot of collabs over the years. I've got my favorite collab, but I don't know if that necessarily made me understand myself better. So let me think. I think the one that I think made my made me understand myself better would be the I've done two videos of a moment with Dr. Wolf. The the first one was about inadequacy, I think, if memory serves, and the second one was um, 
best patient ever where it was essentially supposed to be Dr. Wolf in a therapy session with Mary but it became that it was going to be Maddie wanted to have a session with Doc but Mary took over and because you know Maddie and Mary are essentially representations of two sides of the creativity coin so like Maddie would represent the logical and analytical side of creativity the the creativity that asks why whereas Mary represents the side of creativity that's like it, you just do it no reason no rhyme you don't know how or why you just do it she to me Mary is the element of spontaneity ow sorry that's my belly <laughs> I've got a sore belly. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, no problem, Chris. Thanks for the question. Scratching that door again. Ugh. She'll be like, feed me! It's all been over an hour. Should have fed me earlier. Have I seen a magpie in real life recently? Yes, this is why I'm drawing a magpie, because one appeared in my garden last week. I was like, oh, that's very rare. And I when I'm working down south in the UK, there's magpies everywhere. But where I live, there is none. So to see one this the so far north was very rare. It was awesome. <laughs> okay, Jim, can you tell me how to fix it? Give me some constructive criticism. Tell me what what to fix, how to fix it. Cuz telling me that it's weak without telling me how to fix it, that's I need help, dude. <laughs> Does Tuppence give you kisses? Sometimes. It's like incompletely annoying. Okay. You're telling me it's wrong but not telling me how to fix it. You need branches. Why are you typing in capital letters, dude? I don't know what branches has to do with the, the, the shoulder. I don't know why you're saying branches. One sec, I'm gonna let my cat in. There we go. Ooh, look at all the wonderful colourful emojis. <laughs> Thank you, Raven One X. Can we see Kitty? No. No, she's... 
I do have a camera, but I'm not going to put it on. Hello. But if you want to see the cat quiz, I will send you photos. <laughs> nice back pad nice back paddling Jim <laughs> I like rabbits I've never owned a rabbit but yeah all right, Chris reminds me to do that when I end the stream. I'm probably going to end it in about 15 minutes or so. In fact, let's do that on a separate layer. What do you call a uh, confused lightning? Someone who is blissfully ignorant. Okay. Mudkip. I'm a mudkip now. Oh, okay. Mary who? <laughs> Mary knows exactly who she is. Not yet, Wicked, because human malware is still a thing. International travel has not opened up yet for the UK. 
Um, because we are an island, the travel restrictions are much more strict than they are in the continent. So, not yet. I haven't seen my fiancé in two years. So, yeah. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> Draw Maddie as a mudkip. Or a mudkip wearing the Maddie hat. That would be adorable. <laughs> yes. Mad mudkip. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> No, don't throw compliments at the Maddie. The Maddie cannot handle them. Please don't do that. That's my kryptonite. Don't listen to Frost. He doesn't know what he's saying. What Pokemon would Mary look good as? I want to say Jigglypuff. <laughs> I've never been to Puerto Rico, no. You look as beautiful as a mudkip. Oh, well, thank you so much, darling. <laughs> Mary Moo, Mary has a mill tank. No. <laughs> oh, lordy. No. Please, God, no. I hate that Pokemon. I'm like, I. Oh. Ugh, it was so OP at one point. I still remember. Flashbacks. Oh, hurry up and die, you stupid mill tank! Stop using rollout! <laughs> I think, what what was that? Was that, um... Oh, was that in Pokemon Sapphire or something? No. No, it was, uh, Pokemon Gold. I think. The post flashback of Miltank. I know, right? Relatable. Have you seen the Pokemon that looks like a sword before? Yes! I seem to remember in... Um, Pokemon Sun? Is there was a sword Pokemon. But it's funny though, because people are like, oh no, you can't make a Pokemon out of a sword or like a lamp. I'm like, literally in Gen 1, they had a Pokemon made out of mud. <laughs> so, anything goes. Come on. <laughs> literally called muck. What is your favourite thing to draw and least favourite thing to draw? <sighs> um, I love drawing dragons because there's no set rules in there for how a dragon looks really. Depending on what um, variety you're going for and where they're from. Like obviously in what, myth what um, mythology they're based on. But least favourite thing? Oh... Least favorite. I 
I don't really have a least favourite. I have things that I don't know how to draw yet. Anything that... Oh. <sighs> least favourite. I don't like drawing babies. I find baby things really difficult to draw. I'm not sure why. I can never get the proportions right. Um, I would like to make it more iridesc uh, uh, iridescent, yeah. I'm still kind of building things up here. I think what I need to do, if I just move that. Oops, no. Uh, darn it. Alright, fine. Duplicate. Then... I mean, I've watched plenty of tutorials that show me how to draw babies or like baby animals or baby humans and I still can't get it right. I don't know what I do wrong. It always comes out looking really off. So that's something I need to work on. My favourite animal? <laughs> the cat's looking at me like, don't you dare say dog. <laughs> I like cats. Big cats. Little cats. <laughs> this cat. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Draw a baby Maddie. No. <laughs> Who do you think in your next life video you can try making a dragon? Oh, in my next live stream I should draw a dragon? Yeah, I mean I've drawn dragons in live streams plenty of times before but sure, I can do that. I just felt like working on birds today because I love drawing birds and dragons are very similar in their structure to birds so much more in common with birds and reptiles anyway.
because obviously they're winged. You would think, no, they've more in common with bats. I'm like, actually, no. Hades is best villain. There we go. Yeah. Had that wrong. Talk is not a villain. Oh, it's because it, uh, magpies, like most crow birds, they are attracted to shiny things. The reason for that is because the crow family, which is what the magpies are part of, they're the only recorded bird species to recognise their own reflection. So if they see something shiny, they can actually see their eyes being reflected back and so that's why they collect these shiny things so like uh there was an experiment with lots of different birds where they would have them in cages that had mirrors in them and you know a mirror is usually put in a bird cage so that it's for company if a bird sees their reflection they don't see it as their reflection they see it as another bird but they did this uh experiment where they had all these birds in cages with mirrors like an entire wall of the cage was a mirror and they put these little dots on the birds like right under their beak which is their blind spot and the only bird that removed the dot was the magpie and it would only remove the dot if it could see it and it could see it and it was scratching to get the dot off because it saw it in the mirror so it recognized its own reflection so i think that is really cool <laughs> Birds are smart. <laughs> I love birds. Not necessarily glass, but they can recognize surfaces, but they can recognize where a surface is there so they know that that's a solid surface but what I'm saying is not all animals can recognize their own reflection when they see their reflection they think oh that's another animal a lot of the times 
And the only bird that is recorded to recognise its own reflection is the magpie. Basically, if Munchkin and Mary were turned into birds, what would they turn into? I think Mary would be a swan <laughs> or a flamingo. I think Maddie would be a pipit. <laughs> I like pipits, they're cute. They're so little, but they just bounce. They're so bouncy, so cute. Oops. I'll make that red really pop. I need to stop soon, cause it's after midnight for me. Uh, Pippet, it's a, a small black and white bird. It's almost like a swallow, but they're a little bit taller, but they're really small. Like, um, if you see a flying bird that's black and white, it's just a little, like, garden bird. And instead of flying, it kind of throws itself in the air, folds its wings in, and then kind of bounces, and then opens the wing again, bounces again in air. That's usually a pipit. If you see a bird doing that, it's a pipit. They're so cute. Teeny tiny. No, I want to finish the magpie before I go to bed. Pippet, not Pippin. <laughs> and if I made the outer glow red, then the inner white, would that? Ooh, yes. Okay, perfect. If I could have my hair any colour permanently, um, blue. Uh, my hair is purple at the moment, but my I change my hair colour quite a lot, but the colour that is always my favourite is blue. That's why Maddie's hair is blue. In an ideal world, I would love to have blue permanently. But it fades really fast, so it's difficult to keep it blue all the time. Oof, that's a bit too much. Now I need to add the glow to the tail as well. Outer glow. There we go. All right. Oh, one sec, guys.
All right, sorry about that, guys. Just adding some chain to his tail now. Oops, that's too sharp. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> what armor is the best one made by Maddie Stark, the Mary suit? <laughs> Maybe suit. That sounds terrifying. I should draw a, a Maybe Sue mech sometime. That would be awesome. Well, someone else can do it. it. Doesn't have to be me. It could be someone else. That's a little bit too much. There we go. Oh, that's... I solved the problem, sir. Dexter's lab style or Gundam? Probably Gundam. I mean, I love Dexter's lab, but yeah, I don't think it would be in that style. If I'm going to do a mech, I would want it to be, not that Dexter's Lab isn't proper, but like, I would like it to make mechanical sense. No. It's in the wrong layer. Ah, darn. I'm not open for commissions at the moment, no. Oh, 
Uh, Rayvon, thank you for coming to the live stream and thank you for your donations. Take care. I'll let everyone know when I open for commissions when I do. I've still got a lot of commissions to catch up on. I've got a lot of art courses I need to finish, a lot of portfolio work to do, and I'm not quite in the right state of mind to take on commissions right now. So, um, you know, it's I'm just needing to take care of myself for a while and I hope to open for commissions again. I was hoping to open in March, but obviously this is May now and I'm still not open yet, but Hopefully things will improve. But I really like, I really appreciate that people are interested, but I'm not opening that right now. Almost done. Do you agree with the phrase, imitation is the greatest form of flattery? I think there's some truth to that, sure. I wouldn't say it's the greatest form of flattery. I don't know if I'd go that far. Like, I don't like that people use that phrase as an excuse for just straight up plagiarizing someone, you know? But if you're infusing your work with someone else's like you're being influenced by someone that's fine but if you're just imitating what they're doing 
then you're kind of just ripping them off. And that's not flattery, that's theft. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm talking like literal, li literal plagiarism here. I'm not talking about like imitating a style. That's different. You can't steal a style, but you can like someone, one artist will be very similar to another artist. And maybe yes, they've been influenced by the other artist, but the only way that they're probably possibly stealing something is if they straight up copy a piece of art that someone else has made. Will we see a review video of the Mitchells versus the Machines? I'd like to. Um, I've watched it for the fourth time today and I'm... I have some questions and I want to make sure that I answer them first. Like there's just certain things that I, I want to know the process behind the look of the film before I make a, a video about it. So that's going to take some time. M imitate the art style, not the art piece. Yeah, I mean, you can look at an art piece and <clears throat> make a piece based on that. But as long as you say, hey, this was based on this person's art, heavily influenced by or a straight up copy of it and credit them it's when you don't give credit that's when the problems start because like i came across a situation regarding an artist i used to share an office space with where another artist used the exact same reference photo for a painting and their two paintings were very similar and each artist was accused of plagiarism but they actually figured out, no, they hadn't copied each other's paintings, they actually just used the same stock photo. And that happens. That happens a lot. If you're painting photorealistic stuff, that can happen if you're using free stock images. So, yeah. <laughs> Kick is doing okay. He's got some problems with his Wi-Fi at the moment. Otherwise, he would probably be with us in a call, but he's not able to join. But hopefully he'll get it sorted soon. All right, five minutes, guys, and then I'll need to call it a night. Pretty bird. Yes, it is pretty bird.
<laughs> You're up longer than normal. Don't know if I'm proud or concerned. <laughs> Be concerned. Don't be concerned. Most creative people are night owls. Hey, sometime I should do a, a night, an overnight stream where I'm drawing owls, so I'm a literal night owl drawing a night owl. <laughs> That'd be funny. Let's do it. That's an awesome idea. That's the best idea ever. Don't tell Doc. I made a pun. Yes, I did. And it was the best pun ever. Nope, don't like that. It's a bit too scratchy. What do you like to do more? Content reviews or thoughts on social topics? Probably social topics. Because if I'm reviewing a thing, I have to stick to one particular theme. But if I'm talking about a social topic, I can jump to a lot of things. I can use examples of stuff. But if it's a review, there's a bit more limitation there to what you can talk about. I enjoy doing both, but I think I much prefer doing social topics. If you get into the Discord via Patreon and you have to cancel, do you get to stay? I believe you do, but I have to double check that because I think it depends on what your patronage is. I'll have to double check that. Have I seen the trailers for the Cruella Disney movie? I have, um, see this is how I feel about all these movies that Disney are making that are about the backstories of their villains. I'm like, it's basically you're throwing toys out of the pram because you couldn't get the rights to make Wicked. And I know a lot of people have said that, but it's true because they did try to get the rights to make Wicked into a movie and they didn't get the rights. So now they're like, okay, fine, we'll just make our own version here, have Maleficent. She's not a villain anymore, she's an anti-hero, and I'm like, Bull, come on. She's the mistress of all evil, and you made her a sympathetic victim of circumstance. I'm like, come on. And I'm just really scared they're going to do the exact same thing with Cruella. <laughs> I mean, she literally wanted to kill puppies so that she could wear them. How do you get... How do you paint that in a good light? I... I, <laughs> I don't know. It's not exactly sympathetic. She is one of the most hated villains ever. So. <laughs> but we love to hate her. So I'm like, I'm probably still going to watch the movie. <laughs> but I doubt I'll enjoy it. 
Once Upon a Time has the advantage of being a series, so they're able to explore the characters for longer screen time. Whereas a movie can only do it within two hours. A series can do it over several. <laughs> I liked the third Descendants film. That was really cool, but I wasn't bothered about the first two. And that's a terrible thing to say because the first one had Kristen Chenoweth in it. And she is one of she is possibly my favourite human being human being. Human being <laughs> apart from my fiance. But she was so miscast in that film. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not Maleficent. That's Kristen Chenoweth cosplaying as Maleficent. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> she wasn't terrible. Just her as Maleficent was just a poor decision. It's not just because Hades was in it, it's because it has a better soundtrack, it has a bigger budget, so they're able to do more with their sets. It doesn't feel like a stage film, it feels more like a proper film than the other two did. I mean, it's still, they're still really cheap, but it's a good kind of cheap, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> Did you enjoy the Dalmatians TV series? Which one? Because there's two. There's 100 Mile Dalmatian Street and then there's the TV series 100 Mile Dalmatians that was made in like the 90s or something. The 90s one with the farm. It was okay. I didn't like the art style very much. But the writing was really good. It was it was really silly, it was really funny, but I didn't like the art style. It was too much of a, a step away from the film style. Happy you've been fed. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> Talking to my cat. <laughs> oh, 100 Mile Dalmatians 2, Patch's London Adventure is really good. Absolutely is underrated. I was really impressed with it. Things are okay, we're just waiting for the lockdown to be over with. Well, we're waiting for international travel to open again. I remember Cruella was Ella. I loved 102 Dalmatians because I, I have a thing for when actors get the chance to play a character but go against the grain. 
and just watch them just revel in that. I I loved it, but I also loved the tension that was there because something still felt off about Ella. It was just, it was like a tightened up wire that was just waiting to snap. And I love that tension. <laughs> it's like she's still insane, but a different kind of insanity. To it was still incredibly extreme but it wasn't malicious but it was still off-putting <laughs> it's a shame that Ella didn't last very long in the film she was kind of she disappeared too soon in my opinion I felt like they should have drawn that out more Oh, you're very welcome, Spark Prisma. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I worked really hard on that. I like seeing characters be at war with themselves, like fighting their own inner demons. I I like that. That it, it's their own personal fight. I don't like this web anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. You can play Paper Mario online now. That's cool. <laughs> I know, I know. You said you'd end the stream in five minutes, like 35 minutes ago. I know. All right. I wanted to end the stream when I finished the magpie, and I think I finished him now. I just need to sign him. Happy magpie. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to end the stream here. Because it's 22 in the morning, so I better go to bed. <laughs> so I'll be posting this on Twitter and Instagram. And there'll be a speed draw video as well. Um, hopefully at some point tomorrow. Thanks for the support. Thank you for the donations, especially. If you want to support me further, uh, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link to that in the description below. And you'll be able to join my Discord server if you do that. So feel free to do that. But of course, there's no pressure whatsoever. Um, 
I think the donations from today's stream will go straight to Marie Curie. And if you want to find out more about that, there is a link in the description below to learn more about that charity. Uh, for now, I'm going to bed. So stay creative, everybody. Wash your hands, wear your mask, stay safe. Be excellent to each other. Don't be a douchebag. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Love you guys. Bye.